happy, happy logo day. Let's try that again. Let's get my mic a little closer. Hey, happy logo day. Well, I want to continue on with our talk about programming the logo. The last video that we did showed you how to wire it, how to connect those portions up. So what I want to do now is just give you an idea of the close-up of the logo. Now, I apologize for my camera. I know that you can't see these words too well. Let me just disconnect the Ethernet cord just for a minute so we can look at the configuration of what we have. And then we need to take some careful notes on what we have here so that we can go back to the panel and then begin the program. Now I have a nice little handout for this logo machine that has all the, where you can copy this down, where you can have all the inputs at the top and then all of the inputs at the bottom and then you copy those down and then you can uh, go back to your computer and fill it out. Now, at the workstations here, at each computer, you have a logo machine. And then you can see right at it, and there's really not a walk, lot of walking around to do. But in this particular case, you'd have to have your partner giving you some information in order to be able to communicate with this before you can actually uh, uh, set it up. So let's just go again through the wiring that we set up, the last video that we made. So here at the top, we have our L1, and that has the red line to it, or I should say the red wires, and they are both positive, positive 12 volts here, and then we created the little jumper, and then that we powered up the relay. You can see that there's power going to it. We also have to have the black wire so we have the M connection, <coughs> excuse me, which is the negative portion, and that comes from the panel. That comes from our power panel, uh, not shown in this video. We did it the last time, but here are the wires laying in. So we have the black and red, and then we also have the black jumper then that pulls back into the appropriate terminal in the, uh, the relay pack. The white wire is our input from the e-stop button. Now, I chose to move it. Now, I have all of these openings. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And typically, what I would do is if we are programming on the screen, you've always seen me just leave it in the I1 position. So that would be this position right here. I didn't do that because I got fat fingers and it was difficult to get in and around here and these little connectors don't hold very well. So rather than trying to force and get my, my fat fingers in here and try to hold this in and screw this down, I just pulled it down to a convenient spot. So that's why you see it's in number four. So we need to remember that when we go back and start programming so that we have the correct wire into the input because the, um, the e-stop button is our input then to give everything else the instructions to the logo machine. So let's just look down here at the Qs. These are the outputs we have today connected up Q1, 2, 3, and 4. And what I've chose to do is I've chose to give different colors for each one. Now I started wiring in the last video I did, I started wiring this as yellow and green. So what I did is I changed my mind and I had the green wire coming in here and I just didn't want to have people corn fused when they looked at this. So I changed the coloring to yellow. So now we have the three separate outputs that we have. So the brown, and we'll want to label this on our, on our drawing. The brown is the controller. The green is the green light. The yellow is the horn and the red is the red light. So we have one, two, three, and four. So you need to remember the numbers and we need to write that down so that when we get back to actually programming 
the logo that we have the appropriate setup. Now the yellow Ethernet cord goes right in here at this point. And make sure that you have a good Ethernet cord that it has the little tab on it. Some of the ones in my room have been busted off and they're uh, really tough to deal with, with without that tab. They just literally fall out and then you lose connection. So what I wanted to do now is we're ready to communicate with this logo machine. So in order to start this, what we need to do is to make sure that it's powered up. So you see the little flashing light here gives us some of the idea. Now I've already connected to this so you can see it flashing. Otherwise this just will stay green. And we have power to our relay pack. And uh, we've not got nothing connected to the relay pack right now. We will. There will be other inputs that we'll send in here. Right now I've got it all stripped down though so that we just have one part at a time. And then we'll come back and we'll fill in some of those other inputs. But the first thing that I need to do in order to communicate this is I need to find the IP address of the machine. Now I apologize for my camera because it's difficult to see. Uh, right up here is the start stop button. Then we have program, then we have setup, and right down here we have the word network. So then I want to do my down arrow to get to network. Then I hit the enter button and then it automatically pops up. Now you need to record on a piece of paper these numbers because you need to go copy them down when you start to uh, communicate and try to communicate through the computer and send signals to the Siemens. So the IP address of this device, and I think they're all set up this way. As a matter of fact, I'm sure this number might change way down here. But we have 192. Then there's the dot. Then 168. The next dot then is a triple zeros. It won't allow you to put triple zeros, so just put the one zero. And then at this point, then you're going to have to force it to jump the period, and then you put a one. The subnet, once you put the 255, then it automatically, this might pop up automatically, but just make sure that you put that in. 255, 255, 255, and then zero. And then the gateway. Now, this is kind of unusual that the gateway on this one says all zeros. Uh, normally, it's a repeat of this guy, which would be 192, 168, 0, and 1. And actually, even though it says this on this machine that it's all zeros, it really wants you to put this number in. And it, matter of fact, the program won't even allow you to start with a 0. So you have to go back with this number. But instead of the 1, you need to put the, uh, uh, put the 0. So in our case, when we put the gateway, it'll be 192.168.0, jump, jump the dot, and then a zero again. So you need to put those, that information into your brain or on a piece of paper so that when you walk back over to your computer that you have that set up. Just some highlights, too, about this is that it's attached to the board by this metal piece that you see on either side. This is called DIN rail. And this, com this device snaps into that DIN rail. And this is a universal locking device that you can buy. Uh, we have, um, I buy these in strips of 24 inches and then I cut them for each of the panels so that we have a way of for, uh, um, holding this down. There really is no other good way you know, that there are any screw holes or anything like this. So you almost are forced to use the DIN rail. It's real nice because we can switch up. We can add more. If this was longer, we could add more pieces to it. We could add more relays going in this direction. But in our case, for our application for the state uh, table that we have set the uh, competition for SkillsUSA, one, one uh, uh, relay pack is, is good enough. I think the one at Nationals, though, there's a, over here, there's a power relay that all it does is supply 12 volts to it. We use that with a separate supply. Instead of paying $300 for this guy over here, I can buy a power supply. 
I think I paid 20 bucks for it and it's mounted underneath the table and then it pops up right through here with a couple of wires and then we just use it um, use these connectors as you saw in the last video so that's about it for now what we're going to do then is that we're going to go back and continue with this so I can show you how you would program and then I'm hoping to get set up on a camera so that you can actually watch the download but my camera doesn't focus very well so we'll try to do that at a later date okay thanks for watching bye